and welcome to today's episode of LinkedIn with Louise. Today's podcast episode is brought to you by the Sales Maven Society. You may remember my lovely guest, Nikki Rush, who runs the Sales Maven Society. She is a absolute superstar at sales coaching, and I wanted to bring you this opportunity to find out more about it. The Sales Maven Society offers you daily support for your urgent sales question, an extensive library of bite-sized trainings to hone your selling skills, a monthly live calls with sales expert, Nikki Rush, to remove bottlenecks in your sales process. This monthly membership program is like having a sales coach in your back pocket, guiding you every step of the way to boost your confidence and close more sales. And I tell you from personal experience, it works. My listeners can join the membership now and get their first month of membership absolutely free. This is a $147 value, folks. To learn more and to sign up now, go to louisebrogan.com forward slash sales maven. And let me know if you join, you can say hi to me in the group. All right, without further ado, let's get to today's guest expert. We are crossing oceans today over and lands. Actually, if I was coming and had the time, I would come by train and boat, I think, to visit you, Michelle. All the way to Australia with my guest expert today, who is an expert on LinkedIn company pages, Michelle J. Raymond. The J, I'm going to ask you about the J in a second, Michelle. Michelle J. Raymond is the chief LinkedIn strategist at her company, Good Trading Co., and a founding member of the LinkedIn Small Business Advisory Council for LinkedIn Pages. Hello, we all want to know more about that too. She's an innovator and thought leader who helps purpose-driven businesses thrive by creating sustainable strategies for growth using social selling techniques on LinkedIn. Michelle, like me, is passionate about helping businesses attract new opportunities to increase revenue, build a solid reputation, and position their brand for success. Michelle, welcome to the podcast. Well, there's an introduction and a half. It is so good to be here. And if you come by, you know, train and boat, I'll see you in 2023, I'd say. Yeah, well, my my brother and his uh, wife actually did that journey. Did they? Yeah. See, at the moment, I'm not allowed off this big island. So I know. We, are, we have... <laughs> I think one more week left and then it's out of lockdown. So I'm super excited about oh, that. Oh, excellent. Well, my sister-in-law is actually in quarantine in a hotel somewhere in Australia right now because she was home and she's gone back. So I don't think she listens to my podcast. Anybody, anywhere who is in a quarantine hotel, while you're listening to this, hopefully Michelle and I will give you a little bit of diversion in your day. Right, Michelle, how did you get... <laughs> To this place. How did you become a LinkedIn expert? I want to hear your journey, not from birth, but your journey from say when you maybe had your first job that led you towards becoming um to starting your business and becoming this LinkedIn expert. Yeah. Hi, my name is Michelle J. Raymond and I'm a LinkedIn holic. So thank you for the opportunity to share how I got here. Excellent. Um, so essentially what happened was, you know, like many people, how it begins is I apply for a job on LinkedIn. So that's how I get familiar with the platform. And that was around eight years ago. Mm-hmm. But what happens is I got that job and I turned up and I, I've worked in, you know, account management sales type roles. And I turn up at the job and they say to me, Michelle, here's your laptop, here's your customer list, here's your car, now go and sell. And I said, no problems. You know, it's a new industry for me. It's the beauty industry. So I was selling all the ingredients that go into beauty products. Mm. And I said to them, can you show me just like what we sell? You know, like how do I tell customers what we sell? And they said, Michelle, that's your job. Just go. And I said, yeah, no worries. I'm pretty self-sufficient. been doing this for a while. Okay. What do we sell? Is it on the website? No, Michelle, like it's not on the website. I was like, okay, we'll go old school. Have you got a catalog? And they said, Michelle, there's 10,000 ingredients. How do you expect us to update all of that? No, there's not. Go and sell. And I was like perplexed. (laughs) I was like the the simple maths of 10,000 ingredients versus around 90 clients at that time spread around Australia. The maths didn't add up to me. So because I'd just been onto LinkedIn, I'd noticed that there was a capacity to be able to post content for free because that was the proviso, you know, the boss that I worked for at the time. He's like, Mm -hmm. there's no marketing budget. And I'm talking, this is a company that was global, turned over 1.2 billion US in sales. I'm not talking like a small family business that doesn't have resources. 
Yeah, it was crazy, but it's an industry that thrived pre-internet days. And so it's, you know, a long way behind the times and still is. And so I started to post about these ingredients on LinkedIn, which I have since found out is, you know, social selling. I had no idea it was that at the time. Mm -hmm. I was just going free. I can share what we do. Maybe a few more people can see it. And then I realized that's really boring. No one wants to see that. And then what happens is I go, hmm, actually need an audience first. No point sharing content if you don't have an audience. And so over time, I got really good at creating what content works, particular industry, mm-hmm. and obviously built my reputation in that industry on LinkedIn and collected mm-hmm. people all around the world. Mm-hmm. And the reason that it was, I was really successful, no one else was doing it, first of all, but I was adding a ton of value and you know, mm-hmm. people would flock to me. And my favorite part was I would go to the industry events stand at one of those silly booths where we all hate, you know, where we're like a shark waiting for someone to come around, you know, that we can catch them. And, but people would line up at mine and they'd say, I saw you post this on LinkedIn. And I think that's just, you know, I got the bug fast forward, you know, eight years of doing that for other companies. Yeah, I built up my personal brand uh-huh. and, you know, had my personal reputation, got headhunted to go to another competitor, mm. did the same thing still using my personal brand. Yeah. And then I left the industry altogether. And so what went with me was all of my knowledge, all of my contacts. And when you ask me, how did I end up in company pages? I think that is part of the background for me was I saw how important it was that companies need to build it, not just personal brands. Mm. So that's where we are now. Excellent. I love that story. And I have to say in my previous, my first small business that I had, um, when I sold craft supplies, I mm. I actually really quite like going to those big conference events and going to the booth. So I obviously a weirdo. <laughs> Look, it's really funny because you know I was working, you know, as I said, with in the beauty industry with a yeah. lot of scientists. So we had the you know extroverted A type sales personalities uh-huh. on one side yeah. and the scientists on the other side that are complete introverts. None of which you know, and we have to find a way to work together. So <laughs> so it was really interesting. I, I'm like you, I love it. A chance to talk to anyone, yeah. but you know these poor little scientists come out of their lab, you know, there's thousands of people around and we're all out to get them is, you know, their experience of it. So, you know, I wanted to, you know, I laid the bait before they got there. So it it really made life easier. Excellent. Okay. So company pages are something I get asked about all the time by clients on webinars. So I'll give you an example. This week, I did a webinar for a financial services company. And so the audience were lots and lots of accountants, some with small teams, some solo accountants, some who one one lady who was there hadn't updated her profile in a couple of years. So I I accidentally thought that she, well, I didn't accidentally, she literally, her profile (laughs) said she still worked for a gigantic global corporation. I was like, oh, this is exciting. She's the tax manager for this gigantic global corporation. That's a great. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get I'm gonna land that client. And then she's like, and I left that two years ago. But anyway, ouch. <laughs> yes, but still still a very nice person. <laughs> but I get asked, why do we need a company page? Especially I think Michelle with the smaller um, the smaller company. So say you've got somebody who's got a team of three or four or a solo entrepreneur, why do you think a company page is relevant or important to that particular audience? Well, they're actually my favorite clients to work with, funny enough, Mm. because I think the bigger companies have marketing teams and budgets. They don't really need my help, right? So I love small business and Mm. I love sharing their stories. Why? There's a few reasons that I would say. The most basic level that we can talk about is to make sure your profile looks complete, you know, Mm -hmm. so that we don't have those little gray ghost buildings sitting there because the company page is missing and the logo is missing. So that's at the very, very I'm going to jump in there. I'm going to jump in there, Michelle, because I know that the listeners will say, what what do you mean? So you're talking about on a personal profile when you go to the experience section, when someone has listed the company that they work at, that's where you're talking about the little gray building block, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so that that shows in a couple of places. So if you want to update your work experience and show Mm -hmm. that you work for a real company, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, having that company's logo is a really great way to display that and, you know, just builds your own personal profile, you know, Mm -hmm. out. So that's the bare minimum, but there's so many other reasons. So let's think about this. If you 
your audience can tell me one other platform where if I'm a small business of one, Uh that I get the same space in my banner, the same logo size, the same number of characters as the biggest companies in the world for free, Mm. I will happily hang my hat up and I will go and play in that space. LinkedIn is a really great platform for small businesses to evenly compete with these bigger businesses Mm. for next to nothing, right? And so this is one of the reasons I love it. We know if your clients are business to business or professionals, they're on the platform. So, you know, I often get quoted saying, go fishing where the fish are. You know, there's no point going onto these other platforms if, you know, your ideal client is sitting here on LinkedIn. So Mm -hmm. there are two basic reasons. Yes. Also, If someone Googles your business name, the chances are that the LinkedIn results will show up in those first couple without having to pay thousands of dollars for SEO and other tools. Mm -hmm. So again, it's just another thing. I love finding ways that we get the most out of it for free. So I don't get involved in paid advertising strategies on LinkedIn. I utilize all of the benefits of company pages. So there's all about building up social proof is, you know, something that we say it's also Mm -hmm. known as your company's, you know, reputation or your brand. It's just as important to build that so that you can support your employees. So just to be really clear to people who may not have come across me before, Mm -hmm. I am not saying give up your personal profile or your personal brand um, in order to get a company page. I'm saying have both. And there's a synergy where you use both to grow both. And it's a one plus one equals three situation for me. So there's so many new tools on company pages that are just mm. making them more and more user-friendly. They weren't, okay? So I'm the first one to tell you all the problems with them because I work <laughs> with them so much. Um, but, you know, what we're seeing is LinkedIn absolutely pumping money into company pages because they're making so much money off ads right now. It's their biggest yes. growing department. So I'm following the money trail. So mm. there's just a few of the reasons, you know, and I get pretty excited and passionate about all the other different ways you can use a company page creative to help grow your personal brand. Excellent. So that's a really good point. Um, If a company, so I I also don't currently offer services for paid advertising on on LinkedIn. I have people in my network who do, if that's something a listener is interested in, I can definitely make a few recommendations, but I'm all about the organic as well. But for companies who want to explore that, you cannot do sponsored or boosted or paid ads through your personal profile you can only do it through your company page correct absolutely another reason why you if you're looking to do that and you've got a budget set aside for those kind of activities Mm -hmm. you absolutely need a company page so if linkedin's making all of their money off advertising paid advertising right now They're going to make company pages more and more attractive. So more Mm -hmm. and more people have them. And, you know, that little boost button looks so tempting when you see it just sitting there. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, they're really making life easy for people to, you know, advertise. And, you know, it's powerful, not the cheapest, but it's a powerful platform. Again, if your ideal buyer is, you know, another business or a professional. Yeah. Do you think someone who's a solo entrepreneur should also have a company page? Loaded question, but there's two ways that I answer this one normally. So normally what happens is I would always say at a bare minimum, have a company page set up. Okay. So you don't need to post content, but you do need to have it hundred percent set up complete. It's, it's Ooh, free. It's okay. It's going to, it's going to take you about roughly, you know, half an hour, give or take it's yeah. free. There's no reason not to do it, you know, yes. for at that basic level, what I would recommend for those people. So if you have no intentions to ever sell your business or grow your business, and you're very happy being a solopreneur mm-hmm. and you have limited time on your hands because you're wearing 50 different hats as a solopreneur, as, as, as we all do, you know, just having something to direct people back to where they can find you, be that your website, be that your personal profile, be it, you know, just do one post. Mm-hmm. So if someone, you know, does a Google search, clicks on that first link, there's something there for them to find and more yes. importantly, to direct them back to where they can get in contact. You know, LinkedIn's results just, you know, really rate so well on Google, you know, yeah. and we all love Google, right? So yeah. it's the answer to everything. So what I would say, if you're a solopreneur now that has plans one day in the future to grow your business, yeah. then start building it now because you will never regret building it. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm talking free content strategies, you know, just an investment of your time. And, you know, for me, it's about balancing how much time do you have 
what can you do consistent? I don't expect you to put in, you know, posts every day forever. You know, it's what's manageable and consistent is, you know, the disclaimer that I always put. For some people, being a solopreneur, they're never going to, you know, go down any other path. Then it's, you know, like I said, just the basic setup is what yeah. I would recommend. Excellent. Really great advice. And I have had clients where they've said to me, they they understand exactly what you've just described you know it's really of good benefit to you to have a company page even if you never really post anything on it and some people just say louise can you just can you just go make one for me people who want to diy it there's a video over on my youtube channel literally walks you through how to create it yourself so if you do want to if you want somebody else to do it for you go and watch that video and do it yourself if you want help with it michelle and i that's the service that we both offer well i'm michelle i'm assuming you offer that service yeah look and <laughs> and uh, yeah yeah, I do. But realistically, the setup is, you know, so easy. You've you've got that video. I've got an article that steps people through, even if you, you know, just some go people and try just it. don't want to do stuff though. But absolutely. That's why I'm in the in the business I am. You know, I hope that there are people out there that just, you know, want to pay someone else to do it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so from that perspective, I would say just set it up. If you if it's something that you haven't looked at recently, maybe take mm-hmm. it now's the chance to go back and revisit. Yeah, yeah. And you might be actually pleasantly surprised with the new functionality that's made it a bit more pleasant to play in company page land. Because you know, even back at the start of this year, there was lots of clunky features that didn't make life very easy. And again, we're just seeing these new features come through from LinkedIn that are just making life that little bit easier. Company pages, you know, a little bit more successful as part of, you know, strategies. Okay. You're leading me down a path that I have to pick up. So what are the new features that you're talking about, Michelle? Look, one of the most powerful yet probably underrated features that came out this year on company pages Mm -hmm. is actually the ability to use filters when you're sending out invite credits. So if I go back a step for your listeners who may be new to the whole company page thing, each month, yeah, each month LinkedIn gives every company page 100 credits to send out as invites to personal connections to invite them to come and follow the page. Yes. So once upon a time, it would select basically the first hundred as defined by LinkedIn. I don't know the rhyme or reason, but they de- yeah. they define what's relevant. Yeah. Um, and they would send out the, you know, basically it was the first hundred. It was too hard to sort. You had no other options. Uh-huh. And so what that meant was you couldn't really build a targeted community. So back around, I think it was around March, uh, give or take, mm-hmm. what they did is they put some uh, filters in there. So now you can say by location. So if you are a company that's actually geography-based, you can search your personal connections by that geography. And I think that's super powerful. I'm on it right um, now as you're talking us through this. This is awesome. I love it. So you've also got other um, options there. So by industry. So that's another great one, which I had a lot of success with in my previous role so that I could make sure that I'm bringing people with thinking super duper concentrates coming over onto our yes. company page. So the goal is get 500 to 1,000 followers uh-huh. that are really super keen and super interested in your topic and what you offer. You know, mm-hmm. so it's not 10,000, it's not 20,000. It will take you, if you're consistent, around six to nine months, depending you know how much of a personal base we're working off and how active. Mm-hmm. So not a long time in the scheme of a business, you know. And so I think sometimes people get lost in the daily. I got three views. I got 10 views. Mm-hmm. I didn't get as many views as my personal. I didn't get as many likes. But think about a company page as a long-term asset, you know, that you're building. And when you create a niche community, it's so powerful and it will always pay dividends. Yeah, I've literally... <laughs> As you're talking. <laughs> you're doing it, right? I am, because I tell you why, I've been doing a lot, quite a bit of work recently with local universities. So I mm-hmm. have quite a few people from universities in my network. And I've literally just invited um, nine of those people who I know are Love active it. on LinkedIn. And I know they'll be interested in the content that I'm sharing. I've just invited them to follow the page. So this is a great tip. There's still so- I don't I think uh, that bypassed me. That's excellent. I love it. So, you know, and the other cool thing is you've been strategic about who you're inviting. Yeah. The chances are that those, you know, let's say six out of nine people, hopefully nine out of nine people will accept those invites. Yeah. And the beauty of that is the more that accept, 
LinkedIn gives you a credit back and you get another turn to send it out to other people. So the more you are, you know, spend a bit of time up front, the bigger the reward, the faster you grow. If you just hit the button that it defaults onto, you'll invite the first hundred that LinkedIn's decided, not, you know, you've decided you've got no control and you end up, you know, and I, I did it back in the beginning you end up with a wrong audience for the wrong content. And then that's what often can happen when people just invite for numbers. Um, This is not a numbers game. This is highly targeted niche specific communities that you're trying to build. Do you know, Michelle, if you invited somebody previously and they didn't accept, can you uninvite them? Yes, you can, but it's not immediately obvious. You yeah. have to go off into another, you know, completely different section of LinkedIn on a random link uh, where you can uninvite people from your page and also from your personal profile, like remove yeah. those connections. And then you can't re-invite them for three weeks. I'm um, pretty sure I have a video on that on YouTube too. Actually. Awesome. Awesome. Because <laughs> I was like, do not ask me the link. Do not set me up right now because I do not know that link. It's one of those things that people ask me and I'm like, yeah, it's there somewhere. So now I'm going to send them to your YouTube. Thanks. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, this is so good. Okay. So that's a, <laughs> that's a really great new feature that we love. Have you got any others? Look, articles have just come out and yes. obviously LinkedIn live events for pages. They're two of my favorites. Yeah. Um, my research that I've done and my conversations around the place shows me that live events and events in general tied back to pages are going to see a lot of love from LinkedIn. Ooh, um, again, because I think the next you know, the next uh, strategy for them is actually being able to host paid events on LinkedIn, which I think removes so many of the, you know, you don't want third-party platforms. You know, you want a seamless integration within LinkedIn. They're also going to be pushing articles from what I've read around the place, which, you know, I I don't know the bigger picture on that one Mm because, but long form, I I think it's, you know, if you think about your company page more like a dynamic mini website, I think that million dollar question, do I post an article on my LinkedIn page or do I post a blog on my website or both? I think, you know, LinkedIn's trying to say, just do everything on LinkedIn. And I think we'll see Mm -hmm. some of these, you know, obviously they have paid advertisements that go along with some of these things. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's what's driving them. Well, I think as well, I think as well, if you're reading you know, for people who are interested, the whole, I don't know if you follow the Edelman or Edelman report that comes out that LinkedIn share. So it talks about senior leaders and stuff and Mm -hmm. and thought leadership. I completely need to get the proper name for it. I'll try and get it and put it in the show notes. But basically said that senior senior leaders in industry are looking for good quality um, articles and blog posts to read. Mm. They just don't think they're getting them. So people do go... People do want to go and read a, a good article about something. And I think LinkedIn's saying, well, they're going to, if it's on LinkedIn on the company page, they will spend longer on LinkedIn rather than going to Medium or Forbes or Entrepreneur or Inc. or wherever, the industry magazines to read and it keeps them on our platform, which can only help with growing the platform, growing the, you know, getting used to being on LinkedIn. So I think that's probably yeah. where it's coming from. But I'm a big fan of articles and always have been, you know, a, there are people out there who really diss them. But, you know, to me, it's it's um, all about getting found for, and, and people seeing that, you know, what you're talking about. And it's much easier to do that in a longer form article than it is to do it in a series of short posts, in my opinion. Well, that's where you're getting the education, you know, part of social media from, isn't Mm. it? Those long form, you know, more in depth, show us your Mm. industry knowledge, you know, where has it come from? Where is it going? Those kind of things. Yes. Uh, For me, you know, if they're indexed by Google as well, that's another benefit, you know, another way that people might accidentally find you when they're looking, you know, on that topic. So I, I think it's a really cool idea. I like that there's, you know, easy ways to sort on the company page to find articles. There's like a mm-hmm. tab sitting there. So it makes it really simple. And also same with video, you know, the video tab is one of my mm. favorite company page features yes. that out, outshines personal profiles, you know, so if you're a high, you know, lots, you make lots of videos, then yes. definitely check out a company page for that. Excellent. Oh, these are fantastic tips. I love it. Okay. <laughs> so in terms of the actual body of the content that people share how does 
you should you have different kinds of content on your company page than your personal profile or a lot of people say to me oh what do I do do I just put the same stuff on on both I'd like to hear what your take on this is Michelle Look, I think the line is really, really blurred right now. Maybe not historically. I think historically company pages were owned by marketing teams that were very highly branded, Mm -hmm. uh, very corporate speak, you know, that were almost like a brochure all of the time, every post. And of course, nobody wants to get involved in that, you know. And so I think that's where the distaste for company pages came from originally. Mm. So where where I see it now is when you show the human side behind your company. So what does your company stand for? Who are your employees? What kind of things do you go above and beyond? Do you help out in your local community? all of these kind of things that I can't see from a website. Show me that in your content. Let me relate to your company. And then obviously there's that human to human, which everyone talks about. No one wants to deal with a logo. I get it. But a company has a different brand to individuals. And Mm. as I said, I built my personal brand up at several companies Mm -hmm. and then left and they were left with nothing. So as a company owner, you need to protect your company brand as as, just as much. Mm -hmm. I would also say that, you know, when it comes down to how much time people have to put into managing two different places, Mm -hmm. you are not going to put as much time and effort into your company page. If you don't have resources, put more of them into your personal, but, you know, leave a smaller trail. If it's once a fortnight, you can do a post. That's fine. You know, Mm. I I only work with my clients three times a week. We post. It's more than enough for most companies. So it's what you can do consistently. It's what you can manage and it's what, you know, you know, you're not going to throw away, I guess. So Mm. they're the things that I would look at. I love this. This is great. Okay. Next question is about teams because I am doing more and more. I'm getting to work with really amazing teams. So companies where you've maybe got like a team of seven or eight and the CEO is on board with LinkedIn. I'm, I've been hired to help that CEO raise their profile on LinkedIn. I've convinced them the company page. How do they get their team on board, Michelle? How can you encourage a team to get involved with the company page and what what role do they play in that what do you think well I really love that you mentioned the CEO or someone at the top because what happens is if it doesn't start at the top I find it very difficult to make it work in any team because they lead by example they set the standards and if they're not into it and they just go yeah yeah it's nice for you (laughs) Then everyone else kind of does the same thing. Yeah. So there's all, you know, it's like, well, he's not doing it or she's not doing it. So why should we why do it? Why would we? You know, like, yeah. mm-hmm. So you have to lead by example from the top. You know, that's number one rule. Okay, um, and I've seen it fall over so many times with clients that if the if I don't have buy-in from the top, mm-hmm. they, they may as well not pay me money because it'll be ineffective, you know, as, yeah. as in the long run. Maybe not in the short term, mm-hmm. but in the long run. What happens after that is I would say the next step is, is this something that's actually set as a measurable goal for your team, you know, and have you set them up for success with training? You know, do they actually know how to use LinkedIn? Do you have a good profile? Mm. Are you supporting them in this? You know, this expectation that it's just employees' jobs to be employee advocates and sell the praises of the company that they work for just because they should uh, like you I don't think so. It's like you being sent out to sell products you knew nothing about. Same exactly. Thing. And the other thing is, if you don't have that set as your KPI or your goal, yeah. then when push comes to shove and you're busy, and I've got two choices, work on the project I get measured by and yeah. rewarded on, mm-hmm. or do social media, which isn't included anywhere, what am I going to choose? Oh, you know? And so you just not... Point. You know, and so this is where it's like set it up from the beginning powerfully to yes. have it effective. Now, the next step is, is really important. Acknowledge the people that are making an effort. Too often we take it for granted and we don't yeah. have people actually going, I noticed you did this. And so use your company page to highlight people and employees and talk about how amazing they are. Because I guarantee you that's a surefire way to get them interested in what's going on on the page. Mm. So use your page to build up your employees. It's not always the other way around, right? We forget that it's a two-way street. And again, this is where the synergy comes into into play. Mm. Use your company page, build up your employees. 
build your employees to build up the company. Like yeah. one doesn't exist without the other in this kind of situation. Yeah, I love that. That's so true. And I didn't think about the, you know, make it part of their KPIs because yeah, of course, they want to hit, everybody wants to hit their target and have a good performance yeah. review. And if it's not part of their performance review target, then why would why would they bother? That's yeah, and especially when we just go, oh, can you just do this on top of what you're already doing? Yes. You know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. We know you're busy, but can you just do this as well, and this as well, and this as well? Mm-hmm. And no, we're not actually going to invest in training so you know what you're doing or why it's important. We're just going to say just do it. You know, yeah. and nobody responds to that. And so I, you know, the advice is, you know, get in front of people that can help. You know, really, mm-hmm. up, you know, give you team the skills that they can level up and you know this is where it works excellent I love I love everything here you're saying so far so our final question and then anybody who's listening we will be going live on Friday to dive deeper into all of this and we welcome your questions so make sure um, I will send out with my email the time that you can meet me and Michelle on LinkedIn this Friday if you're not already signed up to my email uh, go to louisebrogan.com forward slash download and not only do you get my weekly email but you also get a nice little guide on how to use LinkedIn which is not too shabby but our final question for you Michelle is you got the company page you got Mm -hmm. the team on board you got the CEO Mm -hmm. is invested how do you actually build your community of followers on the page? Yeah, so there's probably a couple of different ways that we go around this. Mm -hmm. So one of which is going to be content. So I'm a huge fan of using content to attract the right audience. You know, so that's going to be one thing. So make it valuable, make it worth time, make it fun as well. So, you know, LinkedIn talks about the three, two, one strategy, which, Mm -hmm. you know, it makes it really simple. So think three posts over the space of two weeks are going to be about big picture. So what's going on in your industry that you can shed light on? You know, what's the future? Where does it come from? What's happening? What's impacting? All of these kind of things. So big picture. Then you're going to do two posts in that fortnight. So in those two weeks, Mm -hmm. two posts are going to be what I call the feel good posts. So, you know, what the human interest. So, you know, maybe it's, you know, you highlight an employee achievement. Maybe it's a birthday celebration in the office. Maybe it's the guy that packs the orders, you know, or someone that sends out invoices, you know, how can we see the human side to your business? Mm. And then once every two weeks, don't forget to highlight how, what you offer is your product or service that can yeah. help solve my challenge. <laughs> you know, and I know everyone says don't sell on LinkedIn. I'm like, no, no, no. Don't forget not to sell. Don't do it yeah. all the time. Don't do yeah. it when we first meet. There's all these other rules, but quite often we actually skip the part where we say, Hey, we're a business and we've got all these really amazing <laughs> things that we do and we forget to tell you about it, <laughs> but thanks for the entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, con- just, sorry sorry yeah well, you're right go for it go for it I was gonna say can we just take a side note here and say that there are too many people who go to LinkedIn to share a story that's got nothing to do with anything that they do in their business life and they get a gazillion engagements with it and then they tell me well this is what I need to do this is what I should be doing and I'm like Oh, well, like, uh, you know, good luck. Um, see you later. <laughs> uh, look, I, I am not even going to tell you when I have the, you know, I get this many, you know, p- votes on my poll and I've had 30,000 views on, do I like chocolate or vanilla ice cream? And I'm like, <laughs> What if what's your business got to do with ice cream? You know, like nothing. <laughs> so, you know, you've just ended up being really, really busy and yes. di- you know, diverted away from what's important. And you know, LinkedIn's really good at doing that, is diverting you away from your goals. So get clear about what your goals are up front. Yes. Um, using a mix of content, so different types and styles is really good on company pages. So don't mm. just kind of stick to one um, mm-hmm. because your audience will be pretty varied. Mm-hmm. Use the invite credits that I spoke about before. Yes. And, you know, one other cool thing, I don't have a personal hashtag that I use. I actually say, come follow at Good Trading Co. And so I direct people from my posts back Mm -hmm. to my company page because I can use them more and, you know, Um, measure things and invite them to events and do all kinds of other fun things. Whereas a personal hashtag for me, if I was to use hashtag Good Trading Co., 
mm-hmm. I can really do nothing with it, you know? And yeah. so, so that's another strategy that I, LinkedIn also has, you know, a plugin from LinkedIn that you can put onto your website, which is an automatic follow button. Mm. And so, you know, typically what happens on a website, you put a little icon for LinkedIn and people click on that and it takes them in this case to the company page. Yes. And then what happens is you're relying on that person to then press the, the follow click. button. Whereas this actually removes that step. So when they click on it, you become an automatic follower and you come over to the page. So that's a handy tip that uh, not a lot of people know about. That is a very handy tip. Where do they find that, Michelle? Uh, so I will send you the details, but it's basically LinkedIn plugin follow button, I think it's called. It's some random name, right. but I'll give you those details so we can put it in the show notes. Okay. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, Michelle, you have just been an absolute treasure trove of information today. Oh, I do try. Like, you know, I am pretty passionate about this just because I want small businesses to thrive, you know, mm-hmm. because I see the more that they thrive, the more people have jobs, the more people have jobs, the happier the, the planet is and the better off we all are. So, you know, that's where I'm coming from with this. And company pages are a tool in, you know, one of many. So just use it in a way that works best for your business and, mm-hmm. you know, use it to help, you know, build everything. So yeah, that's why I love them. Okay. Can I just say, this is why I love Australians. Nobody else has said, I want, I want this to work so that more people can have jobs. We have a happier planet. That is such an amazingly Australian thing to say. And I just oh, love it. <laughs> look at it. I think if Tisdall was listening in, she'd be just like going, Raymond, what are you doing? Um, yeah, I so love shout it. out. I love she's, it. you know, but like, that's kind of what it is for me. You know, I, I, you know, I want to leave a difference, you know, the when perfect I, you know, reason. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So love it. So there you go. Okay. All right, Michelle, how can people find you on? Oh, we forgot to ask. Why why is it Michelle J. Raymond? <laughs> it's Tisdall's fault. So okay. Karen Tisdall, personal uh, profile writer extraordinaire. Basically what happened was when we first started connecting, she was mm-hmm. searching for me. Mm-hmm. I have a really popular name. There's thousands of Michelle Raymonds on LinkedIn. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and what would happen was you'd go searching for me and couldn't find me easily. Mm-hmm. And so by adding my middle initial, yes. what actually happens is it makes me stand out in the searches and it's more cool. memorable, you know? And so, so yeah, so now people can find me. There's some other cool Michelle Raymonds. I've actually introduced myself to a couple, but yeah. So Michelle J. Raymond is how you find me. Perfect. Okay, Michelle, I'm very much looking forward to having you on LinkedIn Live this Friday. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. It's been fun. Thank you so much for inviting me and uh, yeah, look forward to when you come out and visit. Oh, absolutely. My sister-in-law is like, when are you guys coming back out? All right. Thanks everybody for tuning in today and come join us on Friday and make sure you check out the free download, louisebrogan.com forward slash download. Go and check out your free month offer in the Sales Maven Society. And that's louisebrogan.com forward slash Sales Maven. As always, if you've enjoyed this episode, I think this episode is going to go down a bomb, by the way. And make sure you share it with somebody else. And if you need to convince your boss that you need a company page, then share this episode with them. And then you'll be all moving forward with your LinkedIn company page. All right, guys, talk to you next week. Thank you.